One of the most difficult things about creating your own full body armor pieces is making sure that every piece fits to the next piece. It's very difficult to do when you're making a chest piece and then trying to make a shoulder piece and getting that connection between the chest and the shoulder can be difficult unless you put it on and test it over and over again. There's alternative ways that you can actually create full body armor without having to put your armor on a hundred times while you're making it. And that is making a duct tape body form. In this video we're going to show you how to create a duct tape body form just like this fella here. He's looks shorter than me but uh, that's just because I'm close to the camera but he's about 100% accurate to my body size he's made out of duct tape he's filled with newspaper and he's a great way to display your armor or to create templates with so in this video we're going to show you how to make it so let's get started I need duct tape yes we're recording I need duct tape probably three to five rolls Mold clothes that you don't mind destroying because it will get cut. You need a dog. Dog's optional. And you need a t-shirt. Since the Bengals have been stinking already this year, I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice this. It's going to cover my whole arms. I'm going to get hot. So I'm going to have this layer plus this. So when my lovely assistant cuts me out, I'm not totally in the buff. So let's try not to get in the buff. Tape the ankles and the wrists. That looks ridiculous. You're doing yourself a job. Now we're fashionable. You're doing yourself a job? Yes! Hello, Internet. This is embarrassing. Anyway, I can probably do most of my legs and then I'll have her take over. I'm going to begin by wrapping duct tape around the base of your legs. You don't want to get the duct tape on your skin because it'll be hard to get off. Once you get that done, just start going around the leg upwards you want to do a good two layers and you don't want it so tight that's going to cut off circulation two layers is just going to help it be a little more secure and i can tell you right now it's already a tight fit you want to wait and do your chest last because it'll be like you're wearing a, a corset or something that's constricting you and it's going to make it a little bit more difficult to breathe so never try to do your chest alone always have somebody helping and it's going to be almost impossible to do it around yourself anyway. So always have somebody close by safety first. Just be sure that you stay on the cloth and don't get the duct tape on your skin or it'll be that much more difficult to take off in the end. Continue up the leg, getting over the knee, keeping pretty good tension on the duct tape, but again, not enough that it's going to cut off circulation. Switch over to the other leg, get about two good layers on that. That's about all you're going to be able to do by yourself. You're going to need assistance for most of this. Once you get to a certain part, you can begin wrapping it around your pelvis and waist. Before you get up to the very top of your waist, take your shirt that you're going to use as your underlayer and put that on and tuck it in. Wrap a good layer of duct tape between the pants and the shirt so they are connected. Now it's time to get some help. Get somebody to come in and make the wrists a little bit tighter so that your sleeves don't roll up on you during this process. Again, being careful not to tape your skin. Go in a circular motion around one arm, switching to the other as you go, getting about two good layers as you go. Once that's done, you can start working on the shoulders. Use little strips going from the arm upwards. That's the best way I found to do it to connect that part to what is going to be the rest of the duct tape form. 
shortly. Make sure your dog comes in, gives you a kiss, you give him funny pats with your stiff arms, and then continue working with your shoulders. Continue this around to the front and the back. At some point you can start going around in the circles, but use little strips as you need and don't be afraid to be generous with the duct tape. If you do this right, this should last you for quite some time. Make sure you stand awkwardly during this. Make funny faces and wiggle your arms because the whole world is watching you look absolutely ridiculous right now. Also be sure to suck in your gut because as this gets tighter I'm looking like like a <laughs> like a muffin. <laughs> They're just pushing the fat up. It's hilarious. And I'm sorry I'm laughing at myself. But if you can't laugh at yourself, who can you laugh at? So anyway, make sure you get two good layers around your beer belly as well. And uh, don't be afraid to use one continuous piece going around in a circle. When you're done with that, walk around like Frankenstein and then ask somebody to come in with some sharp scissors and trust your life to them and hope that they don't cut your skin from your bones. Now we're going to work on the skeleton of our duct tape body form. And to do that, I've drawn up a little bit of plans and I also have some random piece that we'll go over. You can see here, my basic plan is to create, wrong hand, is to create a base and have these uh, little T shapes going up that the legs will come down and sit into. This will actually sit flat and the rest of it will sit just like this. So this is going to be the base and this will be the body. It's going to have shoulders, it's going to have the torso part, it's going to have hips, and then the legs are going to come down. And the only thing you really have to worry about is getting the correct height. You want your shoulders to be, you know, at your shoulder height. You want your hips to be at the right level and you want the overall height to be pretty accurate to you. It doesn't have to be perfect. But um, knowing that these legs are going to go into these holes, you have to make sure the measurements are the same there. That's really the only thing that you're going to have to be pretty particular about. If they're five inches off, your legs are going to wind up instead of being straight, they're going to be bent out or bent in, depending on that difference in measurement. So we're going to get started with that. What we've got, you can use any size PVC. I think one inch PVC, which you could pick up at Home Depot or anything like that. This is sturdy enough. It's not too wiggly. You start getting into half inch and stuff, it's just going to wobble and it might not support the weight of your uh, body form. I have one inch compatible T-joints. These will serve as uh, the bottom of the base that will hold like this and the legs will go into. It will also be the hip joints and the neck joint here. And then we have some elbow joints. They're 90 degrees. They will serve as the curves of the hips and things like that and to make the base. I also have some PVC cement. This was five bucks I believe at Home Depot. I also have some cutters for my PVC. You can tell I don't use them too much because I couldn't think of how to open it. And basically just use the force of your hand. Slowly crank that down and it'll cut through your PVC. So that what I'm, that's what I'm going to use. You can also use a saw or a hacksaw, whatever you have handy if you don't have one of these. But I got this at Harbor Freight for maybe seven bucks when it was on sale. And uh, you can order them on Amazon as well. Now we're going to begin documenting the different lengths that we're going to need. Using a ruler or a tape measure or whatever you have handy, write down the lengths of the following areas. Shoulder to shoulder, you want to do hip to hip, and then you want to do from the bottom of your neck to the middle of your pelvis. It doesn't illustrate very well how I was holding it and everything in the video, but do it to the middle part because your hip joint will be low. Then you're going to start by cutting your pieces. Once you get your pieces cut, we can start the assembly process. And that is basically the skeleton. Got my shoulders pretty well lined up, you can't really see it. The rest of it, the hips. They might be a little bit larger than my hips, so I might cut an inch off 
but uh, that's why it's not glued together yet. And there's the legs. So that's what the whole thing is going to look like. Nothing's glued down yet, so you can still take it apart and make adjustments. So get it as close to your dimensions as you can, and then we will move on to building the base. Moving on to the base, start cutting some more pieces that you need, and then we'll put it together. All right, I have all the pieces cut out for the base, which again is basically going to be this shape. And to do the corners, I basically took the measurements where the legs are. They're 16 inches. So I made this about 15, compensating for these elbows. It's going to be a little larger than 16, but that's okay. So I've got a top and a bottom for that. And the in-between pieces, I didn't really measure. I just, I had one random piece left over and it was this size. So I went ahead and cut the rest of them to match so that piece wouldn't go to waste. Because it really doesn't matter too much. You just want enough length to help support the weight so it doesn't wobble too much front and backwards. Now this is going to go on this way with this pointing up for the legs to go in. So it'll connect inside these, just like that. So it's pointing up. The same with the other side. This shows how it's going to go together. At no point will I glue these parts right here together. We want them to be free so we can take it apart and put it back together for our armor. We're gonna move on to cementing this all together. We're gonna to do the base uh, so it is completely uh, solid. I don't want that to come apart with my armor on it and fall. I'm also gonna do the skeleton of it, but you do not have to do it. If you wanna do it, you don't have any of the cement, you can, you can use anything. You use some super glue, it just kinda of hold it together. You could even uh, run a bead of, of um, hot glue around the seam just to kind of hold it in place. It's really up to you. But if you're going to use cement, I just figured I'd show you how to do it real quick. First of all, know that this is pretty stinky using a well-ventilated area. Uh, it's also very flammable. Do not smoke near it. Do not have your propane torch on anything like that. So to use this, you want to shake the can first, which I already did. But there you go for demonstration purposes. Take the lid off and it's got this little spongy ball in it. And what you want to do with that spongy ball, is apply cement to the inside and the connecting piece. You want a nice thin coat. You don't want to leave any layer untouched, you don't want to pull. And some will tell you you need a primer. But for something as simple as this, we're not going to worry about a primer. We don't need it. Just a quick, easy build that we're putting together here. Alright. And since we want this to be 90 degrees, we're going to wait to do that until the last. Because if we glue this and it's off center, it's not, it's good. we're not going to be able to turn it to adjust it. So we're going to do this part last. So we're going to continue around the base until it's all done. And we're going to repeat this process for the skeleton. So now you know how to do it. Once your skeleton is complete, go ahead and slide it inside your opened duct tape shell. Grab some newspaper or some plastic bags, whatever you wish to use, and begin by closing off the bottoms. You want these tight to hold that down onto your PVC pipe and to keep anything that you're using as filler to, uh, from coming out. Start stuffing some things down in there, sealing it as you go along. Uh, if you cut it jagged like mine was cut, it's pretty easy to figure out where to line it up. You can also use alignment marks before you cut if you wish. So once you start taping up a small section, stuff that full of newspaper or whatever material you'd like to use. for $14.99. Moving on. Continue this process until both legs are filled, working your way up the pelvis and up to the back. As you see, I put a pair of pants on this that I had from a lacra, I think it is, bodysuit, just to kind of help keep its shape and to protect the duct tape from coming apart. And I just continued up the back, sealing it as I go and stuffing along the way. 
Once it's all done, you'll have something that looks like this. Continue stuffing it, filling it with newspaper, give a good thumbs up, and stop for a minute to read the newspaper if you wish. Fill up the arms as you go, just like you did with the legs and the back. Turn around like you're lost to find some more tape. There it is. Give it a thumbs up and move on. Continuing to tape and stuff as you go. Once you have that done, you want to seal off the wrists so the stuffing doesn't come out. And if you want, you can do the neck as well. I, did, I left this one open so I can stick a head on it which is just a foam head that I put on a stick that I drove down in the stuffing so it'll sit on top. And in the end, you will have something that looks like this. And that's your finished body form. As you can see, I've got some armor on it now. It's great for templating. It's great for displaying your armor. And it's great if no one's home and you want somebody to talk to. So there you go. There's your duct tape body form. Hope you learned how to do that. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Stay crafty. Hey, thanks for watching. But before you run off to make your own awesome cosplay armor and props, click that subscribe button down below so you'll always be updated when new videos are released. Also, if you need more tips, tricks, and tutorials, you can stop by www.ccosplay.com for much more information and articles that are released on a regular basis. And last but not least, stay crafty.